Hello, Shannon. Hello, Lilu. Great to be interviewing you today. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. So this interview will be translated in French um, because your book just came out in France. It has the same title, Be Water, My Friend. It's, uh, it's an honor to be interviewing you because through this book, uh, you uh, share with us the teachings and the philosophy of your dad, Bruce Lee, that a lot of us know as this movie actor and this, uh, this artist, uh, this martial artist. Uh, yeah. But m more so here, it's so beautiful to see how he has trained his mind and his body and was uh, so much connected to his soul and to something so much bigger that it, it, it's really like this manual of, of a high performer, of a master, though he didn't like the word, I, I kind of understood he didn't like so much that word. But yeah. uh, what an amazing task to go to, to compile all this and put this together. A lot of work, huh? <laughs> it was a lot of work, but but it was um, it was really rewarding. It was a it was a, 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 a challenging but rewarding process. I guess it completes a whole chapter of your life as well, since you go through events, things that went through his own life, his whole uh, history and uh, his way of thinking and going through events of life. Yeah, I mean, this book is an interesting mix of like, you know, philo uh, memoir biography and then you know self-help slash philosophy yeah. yeah so what is the core of this message because obviously the, the the title be water my friend which is the title of the book speaks for itself like there is this whole uh he explains a lot through the through the metaphor of water through his teachings right yes yes the the metaphor of water was extremely important to my father He um, incorporated it into his martial arts, into his life. Um, and I guess what I would say, and maybe this is obvious, but I'll expand on it a little bit, is that the core message of the book is how to flow in your own life, right? And um, But that can mean many things. It doesn't just mean like, oh, I'm always in the zone or something like that. It's more about just like, um, finding a way to be your most natural self, to have your essence sort of shine through in every interaction, in every moment, being able to connect like thought to action, being able to train your mind to be peaceful and present and, you know, and to take action, you know, confident and aware, conscious action. So there are a lot of layers in there, yeah. but yeah, that's yeah. basically Yeah, because when, when we speak, and this is, this is a kind of a very, well, this expression is used quite often to be in the flow, uh, but we don't know quite it means until we read that book, because like what really it means to be present, and God, when we see your father, you know, do his move, we can definitely see how present he must be to be aware and seeing all these, and, and finally how helpful it is to, to use that or to, to, in, in real life. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, you know, the beginning chapters talk all about like what we call emptying your cup. The beginning of the Be Water quote is empty your mind. Yeah. So the cup is a metaphor for the mind. And and if you only just get to that point, which is a point of like releasing your judgment, being fully present, you know, not trying to assess everything as right or wrong, but just taking in what is what is happening in the moment i mean that right there is huge yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a big step and it takes some practice and from there then you can move into you know uh your own experience and and how you want to show up in the world and all that kind of thing yeah H how was it for your dad to um experience transformation is there several phases of his life where where you have identified real big transformation and what led him to make those transformations yeah you know i think I think with anyone, um, really, I mean, yes, I think there are some instances where it's like people are just have this big epiphany seemingly out of nowhere and, and that's enough to help them to change their lives. But I think that's actually rare. I think that 
really, we have these thoughts, we have these ideas, we have these experiences, and then it's a process of like integrating that into your life and making it a practice. And what I have to say is that for my father, I think he was naturally curious. There's a whole, there's a whole chapter on curiosity and like, you know, beginner's mind and always, you know, being the eternal student essentially. And, um, and so he had this natural sense of curiosity, which he was able to then use. And, and he was also a very practiced martial artist. So he was used to training, right? And so then he would sort of train his mind, his curiosity. And he would, from the very beginning, I mean, you know, I talk about the origin of his relationship with water, which happened when he was 17 so young, you know, but that came out of a frustration in his martial arts training and his teacher telling him, you know, that he was trying to be too aggressive, that he wasn't, you know, um, that he was just trying to enforce some sort of mental strategy and win, win, win all Mm -hmm. the time. That He needed to be more in line with his opponent and flowing with the moment. And my dad was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but he, so he banished him from class for a week. And then he had this whole epiphany around being like water. He went out on a boat and, you know, I don't know if we need to tell the whole story here, but that was a major, major moment in his life. But yeah. then you have this moment, but then you have to, implement it and integrate it yeah integrate it and I think that that's what he was really a genius at was then taking these things and putting them into action which is an aspect of flow right yeah. it's like I have this feeling I have this thought now I'm going to actually you know work on it yeah and as you work really hard on it then it becomes more and more natural because spirituality or you know what you're you br- you bring uh, into forth. I mean, what you bring in, um, as as knowledge of your dad is is very much connected. I mean, very much, uh, but it requires ongoing discipline and practices so that then it becomes natural. Even though yeah. if we're that, it's not just it's not accessible. I um, mean, sometimes some people have moments of grace, but it's not. Yeah that it it requires ongoing practice. Yeah, it requires you to be really present, to be really aware to your own experience, and then to be able to say, oh, it seems like things would be better if I tried to do this, or, oh, I noticed that I always do this pattern. How do I break out of that cycle? And then coming up with different tools and different practices. And, you know, I mean, it, it makes it sound like, Uh, you know, you have to, that you have to train really hard in your life. But really, if you think about it, we're all doing this anyway. Like every time we encounter a situation or whatever, and it may be much later, we're all like, gosh, I wish I hadn't said that, or I wish I'd done this differently, or gosh, I was in such a bad mood. And so we're always assessing our own experience anyway. So then the next step is just to say, okay, I've assessed it. Now, how do I change this thing I want to change? And we're all doing that also. It's like, oh gosh, I'm always late. So I'm going to try this, you know? And it's like just being, just like turning on like the consciousness and the awareness around it, dialing it up a little bit more. And towards the inside. Yeah, towards the inside. It's always like from the inside out, not the outside in. Yeah. And and your point that you say is really the point of this book, which is, you know, this may sound like a lot of work, but the point is to, you know, do the do the repetitious training, right? Until it becomes until you become strong. Yeah. And then you don't need to keep doing that because now it's just a part of who you are. Mm. And and for your dad, this was the most important thing to self-realize, to to yes. be himself. And this is what he wants really his message is to encourage people to be themselves and to yes. realize themselves and to do the work and to dig and to practice. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, because really, if you think about it, everybody is sort of searching around for like, well, what, what is my purpose and how can I make a mark in the world and how can I, and they're looking to the outside. But the truth of the matter is 
you have something that is uniquely your own that no one else has, which is you, <laughs> right? And so if you work on really digging in there and really understanding yourself, you know, um, and, and sort of like cultivating different aspects of yourself, you are going to create something that is a unique expression in the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I guess it must, it's not an easy task for Shannon Lee, Bruce Lee's daughter, to become her own self, especially with such a big heritage. And your own brother, that when you announce to him that you want to be an actress, finally dies on, on the set at the age of 28, if I'm correct. So this is huge, uh, what you went through for your own self-realization. Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. I mean, I, I have to say, this is something that I've been in relationship with my whole life, like my own sense of identity, because I have this huge legacy. I have this famous father, and then I have my brother making his way in the world, and then the tragedy of his death. And then I come in and take over running the Bruce Lee companies. And so then, then where am I, right? It's like, yeah. where is Shannon in all of yeah. this? And And it's a question I ask myself on a daily basis. And, and now, having surpassed in age by decades, both my father and my brother, you Huge know, I'm milestone. finally, yeah, I'm finally coming into my own sense of, you know, confidence and identity and worth and all those things. And You know, I could, I used to, when I was younger, I used to beat myself up, oh, how come you're not as accomplished as them? How come you're not as this or as that? And, and one of the things I would say is like, well, I have the blessing of a long life. Hmm. So I get to, I get to take my time, hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, it's been an amazing process for me. I've, I've been able to grow because I've had the time to do the work and learn the lessons, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And it's always a little bit like, as, as I said, it's getting clearer more and more and I'm doing more and more things that are strictly for me versus for the whole family. <laughs> yeah. But, but also, my father's philosophy is so dear to me. I mean, I wrote this book because um, his words and practices have helped me. They have healed me in so many ways. And so, and I, I have the experience of going from like being a very depressed person mm -hmm. and struggling a lot, especially with the deaths of my family and everything, to a person who's so much more at peace and so much more present and so much more alive and joyful than I ever was in my and life. And it's only the beginning. <laughs> it's only the beginning, exactly. <laughs> I have a feeling there is a lot more that you're going to experience <laughs> the next decades. Yes, yes. Well, that's the hope, you know, and, and that's the journey. And I'm feeling so much better and better and finding and actualizing myself. Yeah. And so it's like if I have any words or anything that I feel like could be helpful for someone else who's struggling, I mean, it is my dearest wish to share that. Yeah, and you have done brilliant, brilliantly in your book. You're a great author. <laughs> That's that's a life mission right there, just writing. No, but it is it is a it, having wrote many books. It's a, it's a long process and it's a, it's a it's a birthing process and it takes a lot of energy and it brings up memories and it's emotional. It's a whole initiation that you went through. Totally, totally, totally. You and I have to person. say, with this book too, I was so grateful. Because you know how it is when you write a book, you get out a first draft and you think like, ah, oh, uh -huh. I got that, I got done. And then, <laughs> then you go back, get the notes from the publisher and you start going through and you're like, oh my gosh, this needs a lot of work. Yes. But I was yes. so grateful for that process because I was learning and growing in the midst of it. And yeah. so then I was like, oh my gosh, I should say this this way. This is much clearer, you know. It was, and that it was means a, you had a great publisher because otherwise other publishers don't give you that much opportunity to improve. 
Yeah. So yes. they had high standards, and I'm grateful. I can see where you, I can read it because uh, through when I wrote your book, I could tell the different parts where they ask you to explain more and be more detailed about it. And thank God they did because this creates a whole experience for us. Uh, yeah. Like we live it through what you're explaining to be water, just we, we experience it in our body. And there's a lot to do. I feel you, you, you're a person that loves to experiment. And this is something that your dad did with an open mind, as you said, and be an internal student. So you seem to right now be uh, experiencing this empty mind. And this is what you're, you're yourself uh, experimenting. And how do you, what do you, As far as because there's so many things to experiment in life and there's some crazy things and some you know some things that we're afraid of so how do you go by what you're gonna experience like to grow you know how do how do you choose yeah i think it's a combination of um you know where what my interests are and what i'm working on and what seems not just scary but exciting It, it can't just be scary, like, well, this is scary, so I have to face my fear. You know, it's like, um, uh, especially if it's something from the outside. If it's coming from the inside, like, oh, I notice I get really anxious or really um, fearful around this, then that is something to look at and find a way to, you know, uh, come to terms with and face. But I would say, like, You know, in my development of myself and my own tools, it's like, you know, I got into meditation uh, several years, a few years back, I don't know, several years back at this point. And I've experimented with all different kinds of meditation and I've changed my meditation practice over the years and it's different. And Bruce Lee now. was a meditator. What? Sorry. Bruce Lee was a meditator. Yes, yes, yes. And he meditated differently too, which I talk about in the book, you know, like, yes, sometimes he sat quietly with his eyes closed, you know, and in position, but he like because he was so um, kinetic, he was always moving. He would often meditate while running or walking or, you know, and, and have that be a, like a time to be with himself and to let things come through. Yeah. 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 As we're going through, you know, um, I'm thinking of the color black and how as we experience some very difficult moments, there is also a lot of light that shines through. Yes. Had you experienced, you know, maybe dark nights of the soul or moments that were so dark where all of a sudden you were able to see more light? Because these are opportunities to, you know, I, I love I, I love what we can see through shadow. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I have to say the death of my brother was a very dark time in my life. I was um, in so much grief and I was so depressed and I was going through the paces of life on the outside, but on the inside, I was in pain just all the time, you know, in that kind of internal pain and grief and um And I really didn't know how I was supposed to be okay. <laughs> you know, like, how am I supposed to be okay with this? There's no undoing this. There's no, like, calling that person up and apologizing or, you know, whatever to make it right. There's no making this right. He is now gone. And very suddenly and just as we were, like, he was, you know, he was killed just a couple weeks before his wedding. You know, it was like we were just on the precipice of becoming a young adults together and I was going to start acting and we were we weren't living in the same town at the time. We were going to be living in the same town and starting these new lives. And and it was just such a shock. And quite frankly, part of the reason I wrote the book is because at that time for me, I did not have tools. I did not know how to be better and I was just in a constant place of like please help me please help me I can't live like this so you were asking I was asking just even in, in my like when you say dark night of the soul it was like my soul was crying out you know <laughs> like, that's it and really sometimes that's enough right it's like I had this internal mantra that was just going like please 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 I can't go help through me help me help me yeah help me help me help me and then you know help started to materialize in the form of first 
my father's writings coming to me. But of course, they'd always been there and I always could have had access to them, but they were with my mom who didn't live in the same state as me and they were contemplating to write some books around his writings and so they had copied them all and they just sent them to me. Like, hey, we thought maybe you'd like to have these. <laughs> By the way, it was a stack like wow. this. Wow. <laughs> writings. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, and I just, books. yeah. And I just started going through them and the words just started to speak to me. Sink and in like water. Exactly. Exactly. I was just soaking them in, you know, and and in the reading of that, it became clear like, oh, the responsibility for this is in my own hands. And not only the responsibility, but but my own healing, my own wellness is, you know, I, I need to figure out a way. And that's really what started me on the course of seeking seeking the cure for what ailed me. And I guess what I have to say is from a place of where I am now, looking back on that whole experience, mm. while of course I would want my brother to still be here, uh, what I learned through facing that process um, has made me a better person, a more at peace person, a more alive and joyful person by by learning how to heal that which was troubling me. I'm sure your dad is very proud of you and your brother. Yeah. yeah. Do you sometimes have conversation or had medium interactions with them? I have actually one uh, one time had a medium interaction with them which was so beautiful and so um so affirming. I yeah. guess is what I would say. And, um, and it was really, um, it was really wonderful. And I do feel their presence around me all yeah. the time. You know, you do say that you feel the, their energy and it's more to that, that you're actually connected even, even now, because you didn't spend that much time physically, but his energy, who he is, is with you and is teaching yeah. you every day. <laughs> He is. I say this all the time. I say, you know, I, I, he may not be here, but he's still raising me in a, in an interesting way. Like he's still guiding me and he's still, you know, speaking to me and teaching me through his words, you know, like he raised me up through his words and then also his energy. And I used to, I think I talk about this in the book where growing up, you know, all my life, I'm like, why do I feel like I know this person so well? Like, Even though I, I, he died when I was four, I couldn't possibly, quote, know him. And yet I feel him. I feel who he is and I feel so connected to him yeah. that, you know, he's, I, I have this knowing of him in a way that other people don't, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, yeah. uh, uh, we, we do absorb so much until we're six, seven years old. So obviously you have four years of your life you have uh, tremendously were you were impacted by just his presence you were on sets we see pictures of you on the on the bruce lee sets so you were yeah. you were in this whole atmosphere from the beginning there was posters in the home and yeah. all all of it and the teachings where everybody practice art martial arts in your family yeah 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 definitely well and i have to say You know, even though he died when I was four years old, there is, he was so good at being present mm. with the people in his life that it felt like a lot of attention and love and focus directed on me, even for those four years. And really, like, that's really all we want as human beings yeah. is to be yeah. present and connect, like, authentically connected with one another. Yeah. And when we have that, it's such a meaningful interaction that we hold on to it. So, yeah, yeah. And, and when love is present, space and time doesn't exist, right? Exactly. exactly. So it's, it's still there. Is there anything else that you would like to add to this interview? Because obviously, the, I mean, the, the book is so, I, I really, truly, I mean, I receive hundreds and hundreds of books because I interview a lot of people. And, and uh -huh. yours was definitely on my, like, really precious reading. And 
we just want to dig and live this experience, you know, be in his experience and have receive his teachings. And we feel so much he's present throughout this book. So you're even more uh, continuing, you know, his whole work uh, for an eternity. For, actually, you speak about immortality in this book as well. Right. <laughs> so he's like yeah. immortal, even more so now. <laughs> But just gonna keep it going forever and ever. Um, yeah. Like the yin yang that you refer to, also always continuing, spiraling and turning. And yes, yes, definitely. I mean, I guess the only thing I'd probably want to say, first of all, thank you for your kind words and for your, this engaged discussion. I really appreciate it. And I guess what I would say is, I just really want people to know this is not a book for only for martial artists or Bruce Lee fans. It's a book for everyone. It talks really directly just about the human condition, about about how to show up as a human being, you know, and, and in the in the best way and attain that sense of ease and naturalness and flow um, in life. So I just hope that um, it brings even more people to Bruce Lee that that might not have been attracted otherwise because they weren't into martial arts or yeah, action. <laughs> for sure. He's like a mentor. He's like he's part of my dream team now. You know, when I do interviews, I always contact my dream team. Now he's part of the dream team because I mean, honestly, I think the book can be read at many different levels. And I play yes. golf and I interview and I immediately thought, oh my God, this is great practice for golfing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, this is gonna change my game, and even for interviews and all that. So I'm I'm very grateful for we can read it, you know, d depending on where we're at and what we're going through, and uh, whether it's joyful or not, or we want to progress, or we need to get out of a situation that is difficult, or we just want to thrive in life. And uh, so, exactly. fantastic! Thank you for this great work because I know how much work this represents. So well done, Shannon. And thank much you. love to all the Lee family. And thank you so much. And hope to see you in France sometime soon. I would love to come to France. Yeah. I'm ready as soon as, as, soon as we're able. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much. A bientôt. So much. Au revoir. Au revoir.